Why did I decide to build an online university? Well, there is a crisis now in higher education. The president of Harvard University resigned today. Weeks Does after calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of conduct? We have a problem of affordability and cost, spiraling student loans. We have a groupthink emerging, and that warps the entire academic enterprise. I experimented with putting my lectures online and found that I could teach far more people at very low cost than I could at the university. And I thought, well, why not scale that? What I'm hoping to do is to find the best lectures in the world and to bring them to as wide as possible an audience. He came to me and he basically said, I want you to do the best course that you've always wanted to do. We want to bring you the highest quality education possible at the lowest possible price. It's extremely high level content that anybody can use to educate themselves and it's available to everybody. Well, that would be good. I think it's funny because I got canceled at the university so I could try to return the favor. <laughs> I think they're doing that to themselves, right? Yeah, well, we couldn't have a better marketing campaign than the universities themselves. It's uh, similar to what's going on with mainstream media. Yeah. It really is kind of the same thing. Kind yeah, of well, it all themselves. derives from the same source, right, is the capture of higher education by this godforsaken ideology that's... Bizarre. Yeah. Bizarre how successful it is and, and how, how many people just are compliant. Yeah. It's That's very for strange. sure. That's for sure. Yeah, well... Do you see it turning around, though? It seems like it is a little. It seems like more people are pushing back against it now than ever. When, when you have institutions that are thoroughly captured, it's very difficult to retrieve them. You know, we've been arguing about this. I've been arguing about this with, with my team for Peterson Academy. I mean, are the, is it possible to rejuvenate the bricks and mortars institutions of higher education and well one answer to that is um, things that are dead rot and the universities seem to be rotting everywhere and maybe that's because they're dead maybe it's because their time has come and it could be that that's the case I mean I I hope not I loved working at Harvard in particular it was a amazing institution I had a very good time at McGill I had a good time at the University of Toronto it's a real pain to see these institutions degenerate but they're ideologically captured. That's not good. And thoroughly. And it's a very rotten ideology. It's the spirit of Cain, the resentful spirit of Cain. It's not good. They're unbelievably expensive. They take terrible advantage of their students. Plus, the average quality of the educational experience is actually very low at most places, not everywhere. Hillsdale College, I think, is a marked exception. But most places, the lectures aren't good. And we're in a situation now it's kind of like what happened with YouTube in a way. You know, YouTube enabled you, for example, and Spotify as well, to emerge as an independent commentator. And, you know, you've cornered the market in some ways on that. There's no reason the universities could have seen this coming 20 years ago. They could have found their best lectures and they could have filmed their courses in the highest possible quality manner and taken advantage of this new communication technology. And they didn't. And that... That's not a good sign. You know, we've, it's so funny, we bring our professors down to Miami, you know, professors from Oxford and Cambridge, and they're so relieved to come there. And the reason they're relieved to come there is because they're treated badly by their own institutions, these great professors. They're treated with contempt. They're paid miserably. That's especially the, true, the case in the UK. All we have to do is appreciate them. I tell the professors who come to Peterson Academy, like, here's the deal. You can say exactly what you want in exactly the way you want. You can teach what you love. We'll put a studio audience together that actually wants to listen to you. That's the only reason they're there. We'll offer you a financial deal that's better than you can get with any book. We'll give you more reach than you could ever also hope to get with any published manuscript. You can bring what you know to the world for next to nothing. We figure we can offer a university quality, high level university quality equivalent for about $2,000 over four years. We're, I'm extremely excited about this. The courses, we, we got lucky too, eh? Because we set up a production studio in Miami and we have state of the art uh, 
uh, film crew and editors, but just when we started to film, the AI illustration capacity came online, and we filmed everyone against a white background. And so we can fill the whole background with, uh, with imagery mm. and graphs and comments. There's, can you run a trailer for, just pick one of the courses at random, because this is actually how the courses look. So the trailers are very tightly edited, but so are the courses. And so, so let, let, me, let me show you one of them so you get a sense of what we've managed to accomplish. A lot of fascinating questions. Where do we come from? Where are we going? What is the universe made of? How can we possibly understand the grand landscape of the cosmos? When you look back in space, you look back in time. It's amazing we've been able to do this, to study the properties of the cosmos, time scales of billions of years, size scales billions of times bigger than our own. And now the question is, can we go back to time equals zero? Can we go back to before time equals zero? And what does that even mean? I hope in this course to keep striving and asking these great questions, because without great questions, there can be no great answers. And without great answers, there can be no understanding. Wow. Brian Keating. Fun, Joe. Pretty bad. Yeah, well, and I was so happy when I saw the trailers, you know, because Michaela and her husband, Jordan Fuller, they, they've been working very diligently on this for about three years, and they basically built it from scratch, you know. And I didn't have any idea how the courses would look, you know, because that's actually a pretty difficult thing to pull off. But I'm very happy with the trailers. They're extremely engaging. Every course has its own style sheet, like, so each course has its, there's, a, there's an overarching style to the platform, but every single course has its own illustration ethos and quality. Yeah, well, you can see them. Now, would you those. be, uh, is this just for personal education, or you, will you be giving degrees? Like, we're, going to, gonna we're going to, we're going to approach that in two ways. So, we'll offer certification at different time spans. So, you know, generally it takes you four years to get a degree, but you could imagine that it would be useful to have a one-year certificate, a two-year certificate, three-year certificate, four-year certificate. Like, there's no compelling reason why it has to be four years. We'll keep very detailed records of our students' academic progress, and they'll be able to offer them directly to employers. So we want to be able to assure employers that anybody who's gone through the certification process that's part and parcel of Peterson Academy has done the work and met the standards, and the standards will be high. 